So my name is Erin McEachern. I work over at College Drive. I've done financial aid for several years. I left that to go back to school and get my master's in accounting. And that's what brings me here. Paying for college is everybody, it's on everybody's mind, right? I've had standing room only the entire time. So, <laughs> so financially, there are many different types. You have your private financial aid. That would be just a loan from your bank. The same as your car or your mortgage. We're not going to go over that. Then there is cash. You can pay for school cash. If you had cash, you wouldn't be here. So, <laughs> it's true if you had that. Um, this is what we're all curious about. Federal financial aid. This is the financial aid that comes from the federal government, specifically the Department of Education, to help people go to college. It's a little bit complicated, but everything is when it comes to the government. So, we'll talk about the grants first. Grants are the good stuff. This is the stuff we want. It's free. You never pay it back. The most common is Pell Grants. The Pell Grant is based off of your financial need. That's determined by the FAFSA. And we'll go over what the FAFSA is and how you fill it out. Uh, but basically, it's just a form. If you get the maximum amount of Pell Grant is $5,730 per academic year. An academic year for the uh, federal government is July 1st through June 30th. So if you have a traditional student, it's a year. It's just an academic year. You have your fall semester and you have your spring semester. Um, and then no more than 12 semesters. Um, they did this quite recently, actually, because people were taking advantage. If you have school that costs less than 5730 you get cash back. So there were people who were taking advantage, taking classes to only 2,000 and pocketing the rest. Uh, so they made a limit. The second one is FSEOG. You'll probably hear it just called SEOG. It's Federal Supplemental Opportunity Grants. Educational Opportunity Grants, excuse me. This is campus-based. That means that the Department of Education has given the school a lump of money and then the school decides who gets it. It's still based off of your FAFSA score, your financial need. If you guys get Pell Grants, go ahead and ask your, fi your uh, financial aid office about some SEOG. Sometimes you have to ask for it. Sometimes they just offer it. It never hurts to ask. If you don't get Pell, you're not getting SEOG. The third one, I didn't put it on here because not everybody uh, wants to, well, not everybody will qualify. It's called the TEACH Grant. This is only for students who are going to school to become teachers. It's actually $4,000 per year. It's $2,000 for fall, $2,000 for spring. It's awesome. All four years, it's free money. The catch is that once they graduate, they have to teach in a high need area. I have it on my laptop. It is, what, I think 72 pages long. The list of all the high need areas in America. In Colorado, it's only two pages long, three columns, um, of places that they could work in fields that they could work in. These are uh, schools that are underperforming, that really need good teachers. They have to teach in a high need area for four academic years. That's eight semesters. And they get eight years to complete this. So they could graduate, work for a couple of years, and then go and switch schools if they'd like. That they have to teach for four years. If they choose not to do that, <coughs> this money turns into a loan and they pay back. Can I ask a question? Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. All those grants, does that apply if you're going to out of state school? Yeah, yes, good question. The federal government doesn't care where you go to school. In state, out of state, doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. No, that's because that's the school's choice. Um, no, the in state, out of state thing is for the college only. That's not <coughs> financial aid. Uh, for the college, you know, it's more for out of state, but financial aid. Is this, will these slides be online anywhere that we could? No, I'm sorry, I don't think this they are. Yes. Oh, okay. Um. All right, loans. 
the second best. These are loans you pay back. These are for your students. These are not for you. If your student wants to take out loans to help pay for school, this is how they do it. There's two of them. They're both called Stafford loans, but there's two types. There's subsidized Stafford loan. Subsidized means that the Department of Education will pay for their interest while they're in school. They will pay for the interest for six months after they graduate as well. The interest is 4.66, which is pretty good considering these are 18 year olds with no credit history. So pretty reasonable. Um, the other one, unsubsidized Stafford loan, that is the same thing, only the interest is accruing at 4.66. It accrues while they're in school, and it accrues for that six month grace period. Both of these loans get a six month grace period. They've done that so that your <coughs> students can get out of school, <coughs> move back in with you probably, <laughs> get a job, get some money in their pocket, get acclimated to the real world, and then start making their payments. And we'll talk about repayment here in a second. Uh, the interest on this is 4.66. That starts occurring right when the Department of Education gives the school the money. They disperse the money that day, the interest is to accrue. Freshmen, dependent students, which is what you guys have, you have dependent students, their max is $5,000 of the Stafford loans that we're talking about. The subsidized, the maximum is $2,000. Let's say you have a very high score on the FAFSA and you don't qualify for any need-based aid. Instead of $2,000 in subsidized, your kid will just get $5,000 in, in unsubsidized. They're guaranteed the five grand. Okay. Repayment. These are still for the Stafford loans. This is still for your students. They get the six month and then they start making payments. It's just like everything else, once a month, all of that. They get 10 years to pay this money off. If they have trouble repaying, they will work with the students. They work really hard with these students. It's actually amazing the lengths that they go. There are so many different repayment plans. Generally, there's the general one, 10 years. But if they have trouble repaying, they have a 25-year program, which, yes, more interest, but they don't default on the loan. The monthly payment goes uh, lower. Then they have income contingent, income based. They have five different <coughs> payment plans for people who don't make enough to repay. And by don't make enough, they mean the payment is more than 20% of your child's monthly income. Discretionary income. Um, <coughs> and there's forbearance and deferment. Both of those, let's say your students for whatever reason can't work. They got sick, something happened, they're not working right now. They just got laid off. They can call, work out some time, uh, get a couple of months um, that they don't have to make these payments. <coughs> they really go out of their way to make these doable for your students. Parent Plus, this is for you. This is not for your children, this is you. This actually has nothing to do with the FAFSA, has nothing to do with your income. As long as you are the child's, uh, well, as long as you're the student's parent, you can apply. You can do divorce, doesn't matter. One of the parents can do this. The maximum for this is however much your student needs. So, we all know $5,000 is not going to cover it. So, above and beyond that, that's how much you can get. There is a limit. Um, they t the school takes into account uh, books and living expenses and stuff like that. It's called the cost of attendance. Um, and then that's your max. So you can choose to borrow the max every semester. You can choose to borrow whatever amount you think you need. This money, this and the Stafford loans go directly from the Department of Education to the school. If there's any extra that you're expecting for living expenses, uh, computers, books, 
that comes to you in a check or an auto pay um, 